Hey there, my name is Allison Moe. I'm a current gastroenterology and hepatology PA with Atlanta Gastroenterology Associates. I've been with Atlanta Gastro since 2008, and I'm accompanied by my colleague, Carolyn, today. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Carolyn Legaspi, and I'm a hepatology and liver transplant NP at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. I've worked in transplant hepatology for the last six years at the Comprehensive Transplant Center at Cedars. I'm glad to be here to discuss hepatitis B and ongoing research initiatives. So thank you so much, Allison, for joining me. Thanks, Carolyn. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the current clinical research that we've got going on for uh, hepatitis B. And then we'll talk about the challenges and research gaps that we experience, which is what makes hepatitis B so difficult to cure. Uh, we know that hepatitis B is a chronic infection that affects the liver and over time can lead to things like cirrhosis of the liver and liver cancer. There are certain populations which are more at risk for hepatitis B. Um, and, and we'll talk how some of those uh, populations are part of the reason why there's some gaps in our research and treatment. Carolyn, do you want to talk about the, the current research? I know you've got some, some good information. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I'll try to summarize it as best I can in the, you know, limited time that we have. Um, just wanted to touch base on kind of why it's important that we look at hepatitis B research despite, you know, having good medications that suppress the current, the viral load for our patients. Um, current treatment options that involve antiviral medications, they're quite effective. Um, and, but we still haven't really developed a cure for hepatitis B similar to hepatitis C, you know. My understanding um, is that the hepatitis B virus is a lot more complex. It's embedded in the hepatocyte DNA, making the cure more elusive to our researchers. And ultimately, the goal of the current treatment is to help reduce the viral load, which in turn reduces inflammation with the hopes of stopping, like you said, Allison, the progression of fibrosis and cirrhosis. Um, the current treatments are the nucleotide analogs. Um, it's the mainstay of treatment. Um, unfortunately, this medication needs to be taken every day and it's not available worldwide. Um, there are a few things in the research pipeline that are aiming at finding a cure for hepatitis B because of the high global prevalence. Um, the World Health Organization estimates around 296 million people worldwide have chronic hepatitis B and 820,000 people die each year due to the consequences of the virus. Um, the first research initiative I want to discuss is the therapeutic vaccines that are being studied and developed for chronic hep B. Unlike prophylactic vaccines that prevent illnesses, therapeutic vaccines aim at curing an existing disease. And the basic idea of the fit therapeutic vaccines are that they aim to boost the body's immune system to fight against the disease. Other ongoing research is in the immune modulator realm um, and researching immunomodulators and achieving functional cure for hepatitis B. It's not a novel idea that immunomodulators um, and hepatitis B um, go together in research. Um, immun immunomodulators such as PEG interferon have long been used to treat hepatitis B, but have not had a high success rate, unfortunately. Um, PEG interferon um, has a lot of limitations because it has a lot of side effects for our patients and therefore they can't tolerate it. And unfortunately, the medication is a finite treatment with a lower success rate. Um, I think the research community is focusing on combining immunomodulators along with other therapies to reach a functional cure for hepatitis B. Um, immunomodulator drugs strengthen the specific cellular immune response of HBV patients, and there's a variety of new immunomodulator drugs that are under research and are achieving positive results. That being said, I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done looking at functional cure, but um, with the therapeutic vaccines and immunomodulator drugs in combination with other therapies have been quite promising. Thanks, Carolyn, for all that information. I I wanted to just uh, add some points about, you know, our current challenges and why some of these trials are 
are difficult for us to be able to um, get some important information from. So we know under our challenges, unfortunately, the uh, HBV genomic material persists inside the hepatocytes in the liver, even after we've got a functional cure. And that's because of its uh, CCC DNA it acts like a template inside the cells of the liver. And it continues to be there even when there's immunotherapy on board. Um, developing drugs that target the HBV, CCC, DNA, and integrated DNA is often very, very complex and very expensive. Um, and then, of course, finding the right combination of drugs can be very challenging because of the mention, uh, the points I just mentioned. Um, of course, finding uh, a functional cure would significantly reduce uh, developing liver disease and hepatocellular carcinoma or HCC in these more at risk populations. Um, I've identified and, and found some research gaps with, which uh, include research gaps for testing gaps, gaps in care, and gaps in reaching key populations. So as far as treatment and testing gaps, in 2022, only about 3% of people with chronic hepatitis B were actually treated. Uh, current treatments only slightly reduce the HBV protein levels. Children and young adults with hepatitis B aren't always treated unless they have significant or advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis of the liver. Many patients with chronic hepatitis B don't receive complete evaluation or linkage to medical care because of multiple socioeconomic and access status. Um, and then, of course, a patient who visits a specialist is more likely to receive adequate evaluation than someone who may only be, you know, intermittently accessing some clinical or, uh, um, uh, urgent care models. For researching key population gaps, we have to figure out how we can uh, reach these key populations because that's a major part of our research gap. And then having health surface disruptions like a natural disaster and uh, these kind of um, unanticipated events which are prevalent in certain parts of the world. Some of the other research gaps that we have include how HBV interacts with other viral hepatitis diseases how to affect the HBV uh, epidemiological profile, how to uh, determine the safety and efficacy of the HBV cure for children and adolescents. There's, there's major research that needs to be done in those um, specific areas. So uh, in conclusion, I think there are certainly effective tools that we have to combat the spread of viral hepatitis and treated infected individuals but we uh, aren't yet there and don't have the infrastructure required to do curative work for hepatitis B. Um, I think we need to continuously adapt and, and update our informed research, which is required to continue to establish priorities and hopefully aiming at some activation of elimination of HBV goals. Thank you so much for that information. Um, I 100% agree that there's a lot of gaps with regards to access, um, research, and care. Um, I think that does it for us today. Thank you for listening. And please visit the GAP website or download GAP ACE app for more information with regards to today's talk. Thank you. Thank you.